Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to Software Inc. Welcome back to Hard Mode and welcome back to Nerdresoft. I've got some ideas for what I want to try and get done today and I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to go through with it, but we might be moving to a new building. And I say that because we have never actually moved, as far as I can remember, into the Hardware Inc. building. Now, it is considerably larger than anything else I could rent. It is also almost three times the price of the skyscraper. So I'm not 100% committed to the idea of going there yet, but we are approaching $8 million and to be honest, I'm, I'm just very, very tempted. Very, very tempted to give it a shot. Now, what I'm also tempted to do is go into all software. I want to sort by release date. And I want to go to Lion Slim here and offer an exclusivity deal. Because they want $734,000 for six months of exclusivity on an operating system with 660,000 active users. Now, obviously, it probably would have been better if I had gone and offered this deal before we, you know, this thing sold everything. But what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'm going to go and take this deal. I'm going to say that Lion Slim for the next year is going to be sold exclusively on my digital distribution platform. So we'll see how that goes. We'll see if it works out. I'm going to bring my share up to 15%, which is still lower than everybody else's cut on the market. So that works for me. And we'll just see how it goes. We'll just see what happens. Now, I do want to take a look and make sure that everything has stock at the moment, which it does. So Sniffer and Roaster Coaster 2 and Bucket 3 all have things, all, all have units in stock. So really, we're just going to keep working on porting Roaster Coaster 2 to all these different systems. We're going to keep designing Morph, and we're hopefully going to see some good things come out of this exclusivity deal with uh, Lion Slim, and, well, hopefully we just see some good things come out of it. Now, obviously, the deal did cost me a little bit of money right there, which I don't necessarily love. I'm not a huge fan of the fact that uh, we had to spend that money, but I'm just curious to see how it goes. I'm curious to see if maybe... There we go. We're up to 4.7% of the market now because we just took that deal. So that's pretty good by me. 6.2% now. Now, I don't know if that's necessarily going to make me a bunch of money. I, I genuinely have no idea. It would be kind of nice. Actually, yeah, it did. We just got 7... We got 7,347 for January's distribution. So now I'm curious to see what happens when January's done. What is the actual total going to be? So January's done, 11,000. So not actually that much money, which is slightly disappointing, but honestly, that's fair enough. We've got 6.2% of the market for digital distribution. Hopefully we're going to see some other companies come along and offer some deals. If they don't, I'll be slightly disappointed, but it's not the end of the world. Now, this is an interesting little detail. I can bring the network level up to 1991 for Vapor if I really wanted to. But what I can also do is develop a new platform and we can now put social features into our our digital distribution platform. So I'm thinking we just go, I mean, if I just do social features, that's already 100% expected interest. But I'm thinking we go and we throw absolutely everything in here. So the platform SDK isn't available until tech level 1997. Uh, voice chat isn't, you know, 95. This one is tech level 2000, 2005, 2010. So essentially, there are some upgrades we can make, but social features, I think, are the latest hot thing. So let's go ahead and put this on the store server and it's going to go in source control. And the name, I think, I think Vapor 2. I, I think it's that simple. We just go with, uh, we just go with Vapor 2 and we'll, I, well, hmm. What about Vapor? I mean, when's the next update going to be? Probably tech level 95, so probably 97 for the actual uh, tech to be available. Interesting. I, I think we just go Vapor 2 for now. We'll go relatively boring and deal with, you know, a boring name. But we'll try and make this thing as good as it can possibly be. 
And the other cool thing, I suppose, is, you know, Morph is nearly done in terms of its iterations. It still has to go through iteration three, but this, this shouldn't take that long, to be completely honest. I think we can get Vapor 2 out within about a year, probably around the same time that Morph is going out. So, in theory, we can have Morph be exclusive to our store, and we can see what else is coming out around the time. I mean, we could see what's coming out around now if we really wanted to. We have this guy, Letter Manager 4. They would want 633,000 to be exclusive. When did that come out? October. So only a couple of months ago. So one year exclusivity, $633,000. I'm willing to sign that deal. And this game here came out three months ago and they're not interested because I don't have enough users on my platform. Interesting. Okay. What about you? Army Town. You aren't interested either. Okay, so that's that's fine. We have a couple of things on our platform. We have 5.8% of the market share. And hopefully that'll climb just a little bit once it ticks over into April since we did just sign another deal. So it goes to April 10.4% of the market share. That's not bad. That's not bad for a little a little uh, little store platform run out of an office. That is not bad at all. You know, I think we're going to do it. I think we're going to move. We're going to go out of the apartment and we're going to go into good old hardware ink. And I have I have no idea what this building looks like. I've never really used it before and I don't know if it's going to benefit me or not, but we're going to go for it because at the very least I can start printing my own games, my own software. And that seems like a pretty good benefit to having a relatively expensive building. And so this is what we start with. We have some giant spaces here. It's going to be 11,000 to rent that one. Do we have any individual offices anywhere? It doesn't really look like we're going to have that option, which is slightly concerning because my character does need an individual office. But I suppose what we can do is go ahead and lease this space. And I'm going to lease 25,000 for rent. That's a lot, but I'm going to lease that space as well. Because at the very least, I can go and start shipping my software out of there. And I suppose I can put my core team in here, my 3D team in here. And I guess we put the, I guess we put the support team in there, which is fair enough. I'm just slightly annoyed that my, my character, my guy is not going to be happy because he needs his own office. And this, this doesn't really lend itself to, uh, to its own office, does it? That is, oh, that's, that's concerning. That's, re <laughs> that's really concerning. Okay. We'll, we'll figure that out. We'll, we might have to rent one of these spaces upstairs to make this work, but we'll give it a shot and see what happens. So, I suppose what we'll do is we'll go in and start laying out some space. So, let's take a quick look and see what we're dealing with. 13 people on the core team, 5 in support, 7 on 3D. So, the core team is going to go in here in sort of the, uh, the reddish room. And the floor can be sort of a nice kind of dark gray. Uh, this right here is going to be a blue room. And then the floor is going to be the same dark gray. And this right here is going to be sort of a yellowish kind of tan color. Uh, something a bit like that. And the floor is also going to be dark gray. So core team, 3D team, and support team. Now I can just go and essentially be quite symmetrical with the layout of each room since they are all pretty much the same.
Alright, so the offices are all set up. They all have exactly the same layout. The only thing we don't have is somewhere for the leaders of the offices to go, which is a bit of a problem, especially since, like I said, my character needs a bit of a private office. I have gone ahead and put some servers out here in the, I guess, the warehouse. So we're going to be running everything off of those, which is totally fine. The only thing I want to do at this point is I want to look into distribution and I want to look into manufacturing and I'm pretty sure we just need product printers. So essentially, what I can go ahead and do is I could set myself a conveyor splitter, say here. I can have a conveyor ramp, say here and here. And basically, we just run some conveyor belts across to here, down to there. We do some ceiling mounted bits there. And all I need to do is get a series of printers, possibly over here, to be quite honest, where the product gets made or probably back here to be quite honest that would work as well so let's go for some conveyor belts let's go like i want to say this i want to say this would be pretty good and i'm gonna just elevate that like so and then we can throw some medium product printers these are fifty thousand dollars a pop that is a lot of money but if we do something like that that'll give us some products and that's okay we can ceiling mount a little something something like this we'll turn it and bring it uh let's actually yeah we'll keep that one uh we'll turn it and bring it uh bring it down and then if we do some conveyor belts going this way we want some medium printers facing sort of that direction and i guess we'll take this one out and elevate these guys again that's facing the wrong way again and uh all i really need to do here is keep this elevated we'll continue to keep it elevated like so and we'll just i mean we could do storage i suppose a bit of storage probably wouldn't hurt necessarily so maybe we don't want to take it straight to the splitter maybe we take these guys out for a second and figure out a way to do storage instead so there we go now we have a bit of storage we have a way to ship things out we have a way to print things so we're down beneath eight million dollars but what i can now do despite spending all that money is I can go into my releases. I can go to my most recent releases, which is Sniffer. I can go to start printing and we'll just keep it infinite for a second. I'm going to go to Roaster Coaster as well, start printing that and bucket three. We're going to start printing that as well. So we're printing all of these. We want to say a maximum of like 15,000 units in stock for each of them. And that way, if we fall beneath that number, we'll start printing more of them and everything should be fine. So a maximum of 15,000 for you as well. We should be immediately starting to print these guys. And all we need to do now is go to manage staff and hire. Ah, let's go ahead and hire two people to do cleaning. Let's hire maintenance and IT support. And let's hire two couriers as well. And they can come in at eight in the morning and we'll say one as well. So we have two couriers coming in throughout the day. Maybe cleaning can kind of be the same idea and we should be okay with that. So we should see some products getting printed at some point, I think. I think. Let's see. In stock, that many. Gold, that many. So printing capacity is that much. 312 boxes per month. All right. So that's how many I would like to have in stock before the job is paused. So we should be printing? Hello? I guess not for some... Oh, there it goes. Okay. So now we're moving things. Now we should have couriers that are ready to take stuff out and everything should be kind of beautiful, I think. There we go. So we're picking all that up, loading it in the van. And now the only problem is that I am grumpy because I don't have my own office. Okay. So we're going to... We're actually going to need to do something with that. We're going to need to figure that out. So annoyingly, I think what I'm going to have to do is just buy another corner of building and essentially just make it look the same as the one beneath. So we'll do this and I'm going to. So this is the core team. This is the 3D team. This is the support team. This room is going to be for the core team and it's essentially going to be a meeting room, I guess. Uh, so if I go to office for one and I put my desk 
I mean, I guess right here, maybe right in the corner. No, the corner doesn't look all that great. What about like here? I mean, that's, that's kind of cool. It's still this massive space, but I'm, I'm kind of here for it. I don't, I don't completely dislike this. We'll, uh, we'll, you know, put that there. We'll put a uh, computer right there. And then we just need a giant meeting table, I guess. And maybe we'll go with glass or, I don't know. I <laughs> really, I really don't know. Um, let's go for something with a bit of, a bit of size to it, I guess. We'll do some nice rounded, uh, some nice rounded corners just to, uh, you know, make it look a little bit fancier. We'll get, uh, get this in here as well. Get that right there. And we'll do the glass in the middle. So it's like a really fancy table. I guess that kind of works. Although I also want to grab all of these guys for a little bit of detail up here. And there we go. We have a meeting room that in theory should also be my office. And it absolutely is. So that kind of worked out. It's a bit weird, but... Honestly, I'm, I'm kind of here for it. It's it's very egotistical, I think, and uh, <laughs> I kind of like it. So that should keep me relatively happy. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look here. We have 20 chairs in that office. Let's go to the core team and see what we can do for HR management. So we have five programmers. We have four designers and three artists. So if I set that to five and I set that to four, we shouldn't be hiring anyone, anyone else on this team. We should already have all of that, right? So if I go to here, five and four. So I don't think the leader, I don't think I count as a programmer, which is weird, but fair enough. So essentially 12 of the desks in, wait, hold yeah, 12. So this totals to 12, 12 of the desks are taken up. One of them is upstairs and that's me. Uh, so we can add eight to this. So let's add two to this and that leaves us six. Let's go ahead and bring this to seven, bring that to eight. And we should now go up to 21 people, I think. Yeah, 21 people in the core team. And that's fine. I mean, we're bringing them in for the best roles possible. That's whatever. Uh, 3D team, I'm going to say sort of the same thing. Although I kind of want to look at specializations and say... Maybe not hardware, but I think we'll stick with, we'll stick with that. So four, two, that's six plus the leader is seven. Uh, I guess we can go up to 19 on this. So what about six and six would be 12 plus another six. No, what about seven, seven, 14 plus five. That seems fine. So seven, seven and uh, five should bring us to 19 plus one is 20 for the 3d team so its office is now full and for you guys in support i mean hr management doesn't really apply here because you don't have a leader but we'll do it anyways because you know one day you will and service in this case is just going to be uh 19 because there will be a leader and specialization here is going to be support and traits will be fast learner no just the flu no old souls and no cup holders all right, so that should keep them sorted. Let's go ahead and hire a few employees for the support team. Not well, actually, I don't know that the support team needs it. We'll maybe bring in a couple for the support team. That seems like a way to go. And we'll do secondary and programming, I guess. So let's filter by compatibility for the support team. Begin looking. Compatibility is amazing on a few of you guys. So let's go and hire you. Let's go and hire... Uh, oh, you got a little bit of leadership there. You, and let's hire one more. We'll go up to eight on the support team, and that should keep them good. So that should give us a nice little boost to development power for all of our teams, which means Morph and Vapor 2 really shouldn't take that long. Now, I will say I was slightly concerned that we would be losing money with this move, but we are still making money which is fantastic news we're not losing anything at all we're still making a profit we're still gaining so everything's okay there we're gonna go for another update to sniffer to bring the tech levels up to date a little bit and also to fix a bunch of these bugs that we have in here and i'm hoping that in doing this we can just keep the sales going we might need to port it to a thing or two but 
I do just want to try and get these, uh, as many of these bugs sorted as we possibly can. Maybe just go for a hundred and we'll just queue up another update for it eventually. Uh, as for Roaster Coaster 2, we can bring the 2D up to date. We can bring the system up to date. And I think to, um, I think actually to use Bucket 3 on this, we'd have to update it first. So let's bring this up to 1989 at the very least and queue up an update for Bucket 3, which as long as we can bring the tech levels up, I'm okay with that. We can hopefully then use it in Roaster Coaster 2. And then that should, you know, again, uh, keep everything sort of within our, our own little ecosystem that we have going. So we'll see. We'll see how this update goes. Again, I'm not super worried about the bugs. They're kind of less of a priority. I just mostly want to see if I can get away with doing a little something, something like this. Yeah, I absolutely can. So that works for me. We'll go ahead and update Roaster Coaster 2. And again, I'm mostly interested in the tech level. I'm less interested in the bug fixing. Just to make sure, I mean, we have 26,000 active users on this. If we can bring that tech level up, it might encourage some sales. Not really too sure if it will. But at the very least, you know, still making money. We're making actually kind of a comfortable amount of money. Close to half a million a month right now, so. I'm okay with that. We'll push those updates out and see what it does for everything. And honestly, I think Morph, we're going to move it into development because it has less than a year until it's due to go out. So we'll try and get that done. And in the meantime, we'll go ahead and bring the priority up on Vapor 2 so that we can hopefully do a little something, something there. Although I'm wondering if we maybe just want to, maybe we just want to push this thing into, into uh, development as well. I'm not, I'm not super stressed about this thing being like having a million iterations, right? So maybe we finish iteration two and then maybe that's the point that we just go ahead and push it into development. And I, oh, that's actually going quite quickly there. I think that is what I'm going to do though. So we're going to develop this and there's no point having both of these be a priority 10. So we'll bring Vapor 2 down in terms of priority and just hopefully we can finish Morph. I mean, hell, if I really wanted to, I could throw these guys back on crunch and this will go very, very quickly. Although the 3D aspect of it is holding us back by the looks of it. Now, obviously crunch isn't something we want to keep everyone on permanently. So I've gone in and turned it off now. They were on crunch for a couple of months there and that's probably enough. A few of the employees are super stressed out right now. They're not having a good time and their effectiveness is really taking a hit as a result. So hopefully we can sort of swing that around a little bit and hopefully we can sort of figure that out. Now, what I am wondering is, can I throw a reception desk into my office and not upset my uh, my little character there? I'm really curious about this because if I can, it would be kind of great because we do need a receptionist because I want to start bringing some deals in. So hire receptionist. And let's have you come in from noon until four. And we'll see. We'll see if a reception... I don't know if you're going to come in today. It doesn't look like it. But I am curious to see if my if my character will get annoyed at having to share this room with a receptionist. And in doing this, here's the thing. We are, we are going to be able to filter by manufacturing deals now. Actually, no, not manufacturing, printing deals. And that's kind of a big... That's kind of a big deal. So can we do 810,000 copies of this by May of 94? Probably not. Possibly. How many can we do per month? So we can do 312,000 per month. So May, so February, March, April. We might be able to do that actually. Just about. Now, whether or not I could ship that, actually, no, I can't. I can do 108 boxes per month. And I would need to be doing essentially 312. So I'm not really going to take that deal. It's the, it's too short term, but that's okay. We can do printing jobs now. We can, you know, take those contracts and make some money. And it should be, in theory, a great time if we do that. Now, let's, there's the meeting coming in. Let's see if the receptionist comes in and let's see if my character gets really annoyed at sharing this space. It doesn't look like he does, which is great. So we should, 
have some people coming up with some deals, which we do. You want me to print some stuff by June. Now that we could probably do. So let's go ahead and take that print job. And yeah, I think we can manage that. I think. I'm not 100% sure, but we'll give it a shot. We'll see what happens. We'll, we'll print the product and hopefully make some money and it'll be a great time. That's, that's what we're hoping for anyway. We actually have a lot of print jobs coming in, so we really could... We really could become like a hardware manufacturing company if we wanted to. Which is very tempting. It's very, very tempting. So I realize we have a lot of people sitting around who are not qualified for current tasks. So what I'm thinking we could potentially do here is we could potentially go to my releases, go to bucket three, and we could start working on a sequel. We could start working on bucket four, which at this stage is going to switch from digits to Roman numerals because we're going to be fancy like that. And I guess we're going to use a new framework. I, I kind of feel like that's what we're going to, what we're going to go for here. And it's going to be the, uh, NS and Nerdrosoft uh, BK. <laughs> this is going to be a great name. Nerdrosoft Bucket uh, 94. Right? That's that's the name of the framework here. The NS BK 94. And that's, that's because it's Nerdrosoft Bucket Framework made or started in 1994. So what we'll do is we'll give it essentially everything the previous version had. And we're looking at about a year of development right now. But I'm thinking we could also give it, like, Beautify. Which, I mean, would be something new. And having Beautify this early on, I think would be good. Because it means that we can, you know, add this stuff in later on. And I think maybe these as well. It's a lot of wasted interest, though. So maybe we just try and churn a bucket out every two years to uh, just start getting everything in here. Because I would like to get the system stuff as well. But for now, about a year... It's, you know, expected interest is great. Source control is the source. And we'll go to next page and just figure it out. In terms of operating systems, we're going to be looking at U3 right there, which is 4.6 million consumers. We can auto balance this for 100% interest. Approximately two years is a little longer than I would like, but that's okay. Now, here's the interesting question. Do we get someone to market this for us? I want to say yes. I, I want to say yes, we're going to have someone market this for us just because... Oh, I don't like that. That's, two, that's about two and a half years to do this, and it's approximately two years of development. You know what? I don't think we're going to... I think I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to get a marketing team. We're going to have to get a marketing team. We're going to have to start marketing this stuff ourselves because I would worry that we can't hit September of 96. I just don't see it happening. So we'll go in, we can develop this, we can get working on it, but we're 100% gonna have to market it ourselves, which is okay. We don't need a marketing team right now, okay? So between now and bucket four coming out, you know, Morph is gonna go out, Vapor 2 is gonna go out. So hopefully, Hopefully, we can manage to have some good things happen between now and then. Hopefully, we can manage to have Morph make a bunch of money. Hopefully, Vapor 2 takes over the digital distribution market because Vapor 1 has fallen down to 0.1%. No one wants to sign to Vapor 1 right now, which is really frustrating. I'm going to be honest. I could, I could update it, I suppose. I mean, I guess we, I guess we might as well go for an update there and see if it maybe helps us out. But thus far, no one seems interested in signing to, uh, to Vapor. Which I need them to. I really, really need them to. Maybe I just need more servers. Maybe that's what it is. Or maybe I just need to go and... Well, maybe I just need to go and, and, and sort of offer deals to more companies and stuff like that as well. It could be anything, really. It could be absolutely anything. But the good news is, update's done, so we'll push that out. Uh, we have someone that needs educated. We have a couple of people that need educated. So 
But Fabian Gonzalez, you are with the 3D team. We will educate you. Ooh. A little bit of automation. Doesn't seem like a bad idea. Maxwell Simpson on the core team. We will educate you. And what I want to do here is... Oh, I can change your specialization. That's kind of cool. Okay. Okay. I don't mind that. Uh, what we'll do is start looking at giving you... What is the core team lacking right now? I guess it doesn't matter too much. Probably 3D. And we'll give you a bit of 3D art as well. Uh, Reed McCoy will give you a little bit of... I'm going to max you out on systems. And I don't know why I'm doing this manually, but I'm, I'm going to do this manually. Uh, we'll give you a bit of 3D right there. And you're on the support team now. This one I do have to do manually. And then you as well, Sanford. Let's give you... A bit of 2D art. There we go. I probably want to look into educating people a little bit more often, but not super stressed about it. What I do want to do, though, is look at all software, sort by release, and see what I could steal, basically. Can I give you an exclusivity deal, for example? Six months. I could. I absolutely could. This came out uh, last year. It's made some money. I'm kind of down for that. 500,000, 578,000 for six months of exclusivity. What if I was to say October 95? 600, I'm down for that actually. I'm, I'm okay with that. This came out a couple of months ago. It's doing all right. Six million though. I, I don't know about that. <laughs> I just, I don't, I don't know that I'm willing to spend six million on the deal. Um, You, I don't, I mean, you are, you are selling. So I'm going to make you exclusive as well. What about you? You are making money. I'm going to grab you. And that's three things that are now on my digital distribution platform. And that seems pretty good to me. Uh, is this done yet? Yeah, this is this is about to be done. So that's okay. This, this deal is... I mean, well, we've got that many in storage. We have that many needing to go. So in theory, we should have couriers coming and grabbing it. And the deal should be done by the end of today which is what we're looking for. So that's fine. That's that sorted. In terms of digital distribution, we're back up to 6.1%, which is kind of great. So not bad. We're doing okay. Although I will say, I really think we need to go back into crunch to get Morph actually finished. I don't like going into crunch. I really don't. I know I do it all the time, but I genuinely, I genuinely don't really like doing it. My employees get a lot less efficient when we do it, but we have got, we, we have got to get this done by September. I want the code to be fantastic. I think, I think it's still going to be the first 3D editor. Yeah, there, there's a really good chance it's still going to be the first 3D editor. Although we need to look at the event calendar and see what's going on. So yeah, per the event calendar, at the very least, it is still going to be the first 3D editor by quite a decent margin. There is nothing. There is nothing else uh, coming out in terms of 3D editors. It'd be nice if we could maybe change the release date and be like, you know, push it to 95. There is no competition, but well, we're not going to be doing that. So no big deal. Uh, let's see. What do you guys want? Let's uh, what's the top offer we have. So you by December this year. Nope. December, October, November, June. Yeah, so they all want stuff to be printed by 4.5 million units by the end of uh, this year. I am going to say no. So I guess the annoying reality that we're going to have to face here is that I am not going to get Morph, I don't think, to 100% code. It needs to go out in September. It is currently July. That means we have half of July and August and half of September. We have two months of beta for morph. I I think we're going to need that. It is the first of its kind. It is the first 3D editor on the market, so we'll promote it into beta. We'll start printing units for morph. We'll say a maximum of 50,000 units to start with, and we'll sort of work down from there as things go. Uh it is being marketed for us, which is fine. We don't need to get a marketing team right now because it's being published by someone else and that's again that's that's kind of okay uh this thing i'm hoping it does well 
I'm really, I'm really hoping for a, for a good thing here. I'm hoping we get a, a fantastic launch for it. I don't know if other operating systems by now happen to support 3D editors, but as soon as Morph goes out, we need to be working on porting it to anything else. I'm hoping we have something that will support this. And I'm hoping that Morph is going to be fantastic for licensing. That's the big deal, right? You need a 3D editor to do 3D games, I guess. If you want 3D graphics, you're going to have to use Morph for now until someone else comes out with something. And the benefit that I have is that Morph, I mean, its tech level isn't necessarily going to be fully up to date, but... I can update it, I can port it, and I can start working on a sequel right away with the benefit of a speed boost for every feature that it already has. So in theory, we can get Morph 2 out the door in a good amount of time. Now, it is September. I am going to release Morph, and it is actually quite good. We're not going to order any copies because there should be plenty in stock already, which there are. There's 50,000. It is good. It's not great. It's not outstanding. It is $99. I'm slightly worried about that, but that's okay. Let's immediately go in with some updates. Uh, there's no bugs to fix. We can prioritize the updates to morph, hopefully just getting it done. It looks like we can get it done today. I'm actually going to crunch everybody to really get that update out. So the tech level comes up to modern standards and what we can do is go ahead and finish that update and then immediately go in and port to nothing. There is only one operating system. Oh boy. Um, how many potential consumers? 1.3 million. Okay. That's actually okay. I, I don't... I don't love... I don't love that it's uh, 1.3... It's, it's only 1.3 million, but in theory, as more operating systems come out, we can potentially, potentially do some good things here. I don't, I don't know. I, <laughs> I don't know that we will. Um, we could start working on a sequel, though. We, we could. We could start working on, on a sequel. We could start doing Morph 2, and in terms of frameworks, I mean, NS Morph is right there. The tech level's okay, so this is going to be less than a year to get out what we've already done. So, we could throw motion capture on top of this and get Morph 2 out there in about a year. I don't, I don't hate the idea of doing that. I think, I think motion capture would be kind of cool and $110 will make it like 105 Might be too soon. The world might not be ready for Morph 2, but... Again, we'll give it a shot and uh, we'll see what happens. We'll auto balance this guy. We'll go to the next page. Lead designer is Barney Cole. We'll do the two teams and I'm not going to have a publisher. We're going to publish this ourselves. We're, we're still making money despite this massive move and the massive increase in employees. So we're going to start developing Morph 2 and we'll just see what happens. We'll just, we'll just see how it goes. Um, I do think I'm going to, I'm going to take the 3D team off of, uh, bucket four, and I'm going to take the core team off of morph two, and we'll let those two teams work separately now. They're still working together on vapor two, uh, which actually, I kind of want that to be the priority, and I also, how do we do for money? This is unavoidable marketing right now. $588,000 right out the gate is a huge deal. I am immediately going to throw this into exclusivity, though. It is only available for the next year on my platform, and we will see how that plays out. But that is a huge, huge amount of money. I might regret this. I might regret this decision to put it on my platform exclusively. This might backfire and it might kill sales. But I just want to see if it works. I want to see if it pushes people to the Vapor platform because it might get people on Vapor 2 as well. And if we can get enough active users on Vapor, we might get more companies looking to Vapor. And that gets me more money. So $8.8 .8 million. $9.2 million. Vapor is up. It's still $6.1 million. 
Uh, we're up to 7.4% of the market share, though. Definitely don't think I sold as much in the last month as, uh, as I might have done. No, we actually did sell more. So, yes, Morph is doing fantastically. It's doing exactly what I wanted. It is, uh... Oh, that's good. That's, that's really good. Let's bring that tech level up a little bit. And, uh, let's start looking at some bugs as well to try and get that out of there. Let's keep the customers happy. 21,000 active users on Morph. I'm, I, I guess I'm now in this, in the point of being nervous about the fact that we are going to be self-publishing Bucket 4 and Morph 2. That is... I mean, we're, we're, right, we're making money, you know, we're above $10 million now, which is great. Morph is going up by 10,000 active users per month right now, and that means that my digital platform, again, has a decent little share, but it's still, it's still, it still has me, uh, has me nervous. What, you guys want to buy Morph? What? <laughs> get out, get out of here, 1.5 million for Morph. How much is it? It's made a million already. It, wow, I can't believe I can't believe someone wants to buy it. Uh, let's see. Do we have any other three D editors on the on the horizon? We we still don't, which is really surprising. Two D editor right there, operating system right there, RPG right there. There's still still nothing. So I'm potentially gonna have morph two and morph three out the door by the time competition comes along which is fine by me that's that's completely fine by me let's uh push this update out for morph and let's just continue to work on it and i guess let's see what it does Thirty-one thousand active users now forty-three thousand active users with uh, how much money last month Eight hundred and twenty-two thousand. not bad that is that is not bad for something you can only buy on my my little store i'm really really pleased about this i feel like i should have played on the higher difficulty this is this is hard mode there's one that's like i can't remember if it's impossible or something else but <laughs> I, I might get, i might be getting cocky that might be the problem here i might be getting a little cocky but i feel like <laughs> i feel like we're on the cusp of getting to that place in software inc where you never really need to worry about money I definitely feel like I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm not complaining, though. I kind of like it. Oh, my God. We did 3.4 million last month in sales. Now, we did spend nearly a million on distribution, but here's what I'm wondering. If I go to digital distribution and I say... Oh, I might regret this. But if I, if I turn off these deals, my consumer reach is still 66.4%. So I'm pretty sure this means that I no longer sell my stuff on other platforms which uh i i kind of i kind of like that <laughs> i kind of i want to see what happens to my sales for a single month for december of 94 we are not gonna sell our our products on other platforms it might be a terrible idea it might be a genuinely terrible idea but I want to see if it brings more consumers to Vapor, right? We're at 6.1 million active users. What happens if suddenly Vapor is the only place you can get my software? Uh, we just went up by like 1.2 million. Wow, okay. We just made a considerable amount of money. And I think that's possibly partly because... Well, maybe this, the, distrib ugh, the distribution deals are probably still quite active, right? Where are we? We're at 4.8%, 66.5% of the market. Okay. Oh, this one's dropped down a little bit. Only 27.7. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm curious to see what happens when December is done. Because I feel like maybe the numbers don't fully update until the month itself is out of the way. But yeah, we are making We're making a lot of money. 77,000 active users on Morph. That's going to go to 84,000 active users. And in here, we're looking at uh, still 5.1%. Not bad. Not bad at all. 1.5-ish million there. Uh, we'll see what happens as we go into January. But the good news is Vapor 2 is very close to being done. It's 95% in the code. I'm thinking a little bit of crunch, and we can probably, we can probably just top that off and move it into beta. 
and I think we're going to aim for by the end of 95 for the release on Vapor 2. So let's promote it into beta and uh, that's good. So it's it's pretty much where we want it to be. Uh, Morph as well can probably do with a bit of an update and Vapor, I'm not really too worried about it. There's a couple of bugs there, but it's okay. Roaster Coaster, Bucket 3 and Sniffer, eh. We'll get to those eventually as well. Let's prioritize the morph update and let's prioritize the vapor tube beta and hope for good things. That's it's it's that simple. We're making we're almost at 15 million dollars. I I can't really complain right now. <laughs> I'm 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 overjoyed. I'm thrilled that we've gotten to this point because we do still need to get a marketing team in here and I'm feeling like the marketing team they're going to need to have pretty high salaries because they're gonna need to be very, very good at their jobs. Because I think a couple of companies have gone out of business trying to market my products, and I don't wanna be another one of them.